Nordic love in Fox News. Fantastic. We have, as a community, become very good at communicating outside to the world about Nordic love. We are good at researching and we are good at documenting. We write fantastic books and analyses, report and post pictures. And don't get me wrong, it is awesome. But there is something we forget while doing this. We, ourselves, the Nordic LARPers. The participant of our own LARPs and conventions that got to Fox News and Daily Mail. When we forget to communicate to our participants, we lose them. We lose the energy that they bring to the event, their participation, preparation and enthusiasm. We get frustrated players asking the same questions again and again. And we get stressed organizers who stop organizing LARPs because it is so consuming. I will now concentrate on practical side of communication, but all this can be used when talking about uh, game content to participants. Johanna Koljonen has been talking about a lot player safety and touching the topic of organizer safety. I think this is very important. I think that organizers should be able to see their loved ones instead of answering to a Facebook shitstorm. <laughs> In organizing LOPs, I try to live like I preach. Even then, I make a lot of mistakes. And this is why I'm presenting you what I have learned from the mistakes I've made and witnessed others to do. Another manifesto. My communica uh, communication manifesto, it's short and it's simple. Who, the participant, what, everything, when, now, where, the website, and how, clearly with one voice. So, who, the participant? This is pretty easy. You are not writing the game to the game researchers. You are writing the game to the LARPers. Document, by all means, take pictures and write press releases, but don't forget your LARPer. What and when, everything and now. Map out all the participant needs to know. The participant needs to know everything. From should they bring a towel, or is there a sauna if you're in Finland, uh, to how your meta techniques works and the vision for the costumes. Make a long list of all of this, and not in your head. Make a list and share with the other organizers. Show the list to your friends, get a peer review. Find out when the participant needs to know this, the information. Normally it is right now, but if you don't have the information yet, you need to have deadlines when you ladies need to find this out. The towel example is really easy. When your participant starts planning the travel to your lab three months before your event, they should know what they need to bring and uh, do they need to bring so big luggage that it needs to be checked in the airplane. And remember the structure, the what, on the website. Ask a peer review, show it to your parents. Test can people find out the information they need and revise your structure long before the event. When you get closer to the event and you are anyway stressed, and please don't tell me this doesn't happen, you get less questions about the costumes. What do you already know? Put that on the website. Practical design factors or, uh, yeah, do not need surprises. If there is always been an opening scenario in your LARP convention, it is not going to be a surprise for the participants if you're going to have one. Tell it on good time, otherwise you have been receiving million emails about it. What do you don't know about yet? Put that on the website. Tell when you have the missing information in the style of, you know, we don't know yet when we know that you need to bring a towel or not, we will tell you latest demand before. 
update the information to the website and the other platforms you're using if you are, uh, when the information is available for you. There is nothing wrong in updating often and especially fixing the wrong information. Postponing information for high reasons. Think about that very carefully. If the information is in any ways needing people to react on it somehow, um, like bringing a towel or making a costume, don't keep it from them. Give them the time uh, or opportunity to use the time on it. Where? This is all about controlling your platform. This is why the primary communication should happen on a website. I cannot create a website is not actual excuse. Nowadays you can create an easy navigational site in less than five minutes in these click and go things. Social media, forums, blogs and emails are good supporters and channels to take your message forward but the stable information should be on a website. You cannot control Facebook groups and events. Things get lost and people behave sometimes like in football matches. Search on social media often is really not functional. <coughs> and uh, we all have experienced the Facebook system. You don't want one. Dealing information to several Facebook groups and events which people need to follow to be acquiring information that's a communicational suicide. Your time and energy in managing the right information and uh, uh, all kind of content is going to cost you your spare time and participants only get frustrated on their quest to the, should I bring a towel or not? When you find and create new information, it needs to change in all platforms you use. Put it on your website, on Facebook event, page and group, uh, significant information should be blocked and emailed about, always linking to the primary source of the information, your website. And now to the how, with clearly with one voice. This means one dedicated person or a team and no other organizers adding to the confusion. This person should preferably not have other obligations, but she should be part of the main organizer team. See how I'm using gender here. Um, and she should be keeping updated about everything and be able to contact all the organizer groups. Communication is supposed to happen clearly. Even though you should avoid to talk to your participants like you think they are toddlers, Assume that they do not know your organizing culture, your inside jokes, and your vision. This is why peer review is very important, and remember that you are communicating to another person from another culture. Culture differences happen inside Nordic LARP scene, but they also happen in smaller communities like different LARP groups in Helsinki. Answering questions seems like an easy task but often we fail in that, especially by confusing everybody. Here one voice is important, and so is time, and this took me forever to find out. It is not a matter of life and death to ask past. Find out the correct answer, and then answer the question, then put it on the website. When you answer questions, avoid sarcasm and trigger fingers. When you're stressed, every question feels like a personal insult. It is not. We should start from the pre-assumption that questions are asked because answers were difficult to find. So, once more, who, the participant, what, everything, when, now, where, the website, how, clearly with one voice. Thank you.